All you crazy layer people are just going to love this new addition to Resolve 18.5 beta. If you've ever opened up Fusion and you're like, why, where are the layers? Why do I, why can't I put some text on top of something? How does that, why does that, why is it, why is it not a thing? Well, Fusion uses nodes, which if you really want to jump into Fusion, you're gonna kind of have to learn nodes. For instance, if you wanna put some text over a background, you have to make a merge node and put the text into the green input of the merge node. The background goes into the yellow, and now we have some text over our background. And if we were going to do something like put this glass over this text, we could do this a bunch of different ways, but one way to do it would be to copy and paste this image and mask it like this so that we have this glass as its own image and then the text under that and then the background under that. And how you would typically do this is you would kind of build the layers from left to right. So the background layer, then we put the middle layer, and then we put the foreground layer. And this is a way that makes sense to me. I really like it. But if you want a little bit more traditional kind of layered approach, there's a new node called multi-merge. I'll hit shift spacebar to bring this up, M-U-L-T-I, this here, multi-merge, I'll hit add. And this multi-merge node is kind of like a regular merge node, but you can add multiple different layers to this thing and it will put them together. So I can get rid of these merge nodes here. I'll put this multi-merge and I'll run this media in one through the multi-merge put the text into the multi-merge, and then I can put this glass into the pink input of the multi-merge, and we get the same idea. And if we select this, over here in the inspector, we have a layer list, which I know a lot of people are gonna be excited about. You can select this layer one and move it around, you can select layer two and move that around, and it acts very similarly to what you might be used to, where you select a layer, and then you can grab its properties and move it around. You can drag layers in the list to change their order, and yeah, it's pretty nice. But here's a couple things to remember when using the multi-merge. One is once you get more than a couple of layers, things are gonna get out of hand, okay? So here's text one, we'll call this text two, and I'll put this in here. Maybe we'll make it yellow. So now we have four layers. Maybe we'll put some frost on the glass with this fast noise. I'll put this on here, mask it, make this glass a little frosty, right? And what starts to happen is you start to get this kind of spider web thing, which, you know, is fine when, you know, when you have like five or six, but once you get even just a little bit more complicated than this, it's gonna start to get kind of crazy. I can select this multi-merge one and I can move my layers around. I could even rename the layers. So this is frost. Here we have our text, text two. Second layer is our glass. And this next layer is main text. Now we can kind of keep these organized in our layer list. Again, I want this text two to be on top of my frost so I can drag that here and we can kind of see the difference here as I move this right here. Maybe I want the glass to be on top and I want the frost on top of the glass. And so it is kind of nice to move things around like that. But the thing that can get confusing is there's no real way of indicating here on the node graph which layer is on top of which. So you kind of have to keep things organized here in a way that makes sense to you. So it's a little bit different way of thinking about it. You have all of your elements and you're just hooking them into the multi-merge and then you're adjusting each one in the layer list. In the multi-merge, there are adjustments for each layer. And so you can change the size and angle and everything of these layers, which is fine, but there also isn't really a indication that you did that. So if you wanna do your compositing like this, this might be a really nice way to do it. That being said, uh, I want to let you know of a couple of gotchas. Uh, one is this multi-merge, if you select a layer, you can adjust things within the layer, just like you would with a regular merge, which is totally fine if you're aware of that. But if you do something like, say, adjust the size for your layer and maybe move that around, there's no indication that you've really done that here in the node graph. It's all kind of hidden in the multi-merge, which is one of the things that I'm not a super big fan of when it comes to layer-based compositing is it hides a bunch of these kind of properties and things. So it's kind of hard to look at the node graph and tell what's going on. So at a glance, there is more stuff hidden when you have the multi-merge. It's also hard to tell which one of these is in which layer without mousing over. Whereas if we had these split out into their own merges, we can kind of tell which node is in front of which other node. And that's something I've really gotten used to in Fusion is kind of splitting things out, building my background to my foreground from left to right. 
But this here, we can kind of just attach 50 different nodes to this multi-merge and you have no idea which one is which until you go into multi-merge and turn on and off the layer and rename it. And then you can have some control. One thing you can do is grab the multi-merge and click. One thing you can do is when you select the multi-merge, you can just click on any of these nodes up here. For instance, if I want to add a background, just a solid color, I can click background and that will add that to a new layer. So we can maybe put this green layer in here and I can drag this in my layer stack to be where I want. So that's kind of a nice quick way to add something. Where it's gonna get confusing though, is if you select multi-merge and then you click something like color corrector, it's gonna add a color corrector after the multi-merge as its own node because you don't really merge an effect like a color corrector you run things through an effect. You also, when you select the multi-merge, you can't select a layer and then apply something to it within this inspector. You're gonna have to do that through nodes. And so you can take your color corrector and throw that into your media in one, let's say, and adjust that. But again, you're kind of going back to the node-based thing. And so it's kind of this awkward mix of node-based and layer-based compositing that I think might be confusing for some people. The other thing that's interesting is when you apply a mask to a multi-merge, it's going to mask everything. So if I draw a mask here, that's going to apply this to everything in the multi-merge. So you can't really mask one specific layer. You're gonna have to do that on the layer itself, like the text or connect it to, you know, this other text or whatever. And so something to be aware of if you want to do some kind of masking, you have to connect that to the layer itself rather than the merge. And there are a lot of situations where you'd want to apply this to a merge. And so in that case, it might be a little bit easier to kind of split this out into a bunch of different merges. So, so for multi-merge, how do we use this in a way that makes sense, that is the most helpful? Well, what I would do is just create a multi-merge like this and grab all of the elements that you want to add and kind of put them near the merge. And then you can select each one and hit one on the keyboard to kind of preview it in this first viewer. I have my second viewer as media out. And then you can kind of just drag these into the multi-merge in the order that you want to merge them. So text one goes here, then let's put in the glass, then let's put in text two. And then if we want the frost, Let's just put the frost in, but then we can select multi-merge and this frost is layer four. Let's go ahead and put this between layer three and layer two. And at that point, I would go through and rename things. You can right click on this list and say rename, rename this as frost, rename this as glass and rename layer one as main text. From there, I can move these around and get this looking exactly how I want. If I want to adjust the sizing or center of any of these layers, I can do that. If I ever want to reset it, you don't go up here and reset this, because if you do, it will reset all of the layers and their names and just ruin everything. And so what you wanna do is right click on the layer and say set layer one to default, and that will reset that to default. The other thing that you can do is you can split this multi-merge by just right clicking on any layer and say split here. And what that will do is split this into two multi-merges so that if you want to, you can do things in between these layers. Like if you want to color correct everything behind the text in the glass, you can do that. But at that point, it's like, well, why don't we just split these out into other merges, you know? But the multi-merge is pretty cool. And I definitely see myself using this for some situations, especially if I have like a little group of nodes that I want to kind of put over something altogether. But I don't know if I'll use it for absolutely everything. What do you guys think? Are you gonna use this? Is this gonna make a big difference for you switching to Fusion from After Effects or some kind of layer-based compositing program? Why don't you tell me in the comments? That would be, that'd just be super. Hey, if you wanna learn a little bit more about Fusion and all the inner workings of that, especially in the VFX side of things, whoopsh, we have a course for that. It's called Pro Compositing and VFX in Fusion. It's available now at groundcontrol.film. And we just updated it with all kinds of new little features for the Resolve 18.5 beta. So make sure to check that out. And yeah, tell me about Multimerge down below. And then, you know, if you're, if you're like, I don't know, you know, well, why don't you tell me about your dog? Okay, because I like dogs. Even though I do a lot of cat stuff on the on the channel, I like dogs too. Actually, like in real life, I like dogs more than cats, but cats are funnier.